Amen. And sometimes it, it because it's not as worse than the way we were, we think it's not the same. But you know, I teach you to break things down to their principle. And once you get to the basic format of a thing, then you can understand. Oh, that's the same pattern. Amen. Fruit don't fall too far from the tree. Amen. Amen. So I think that we need to revisit, and God willing, He permit, spare our lives, we'd be here in July. We're going to uh, go through what we call it, didn't we? July. What we have in July? church entity that we thought just being a member of the church was enough and you know even in the holiness churches the Pentecostal churches you want to put down the Baptists because they teach if you get baptized and join the church you're on the way to heaven and then in eternal security so you save no matter what but then we come into the Pentecostal church and we basically do the same thing So that always bothered me, you know, that we're, we're condemning them for it, but then we turn around and action and deed, do it ourselves. And one of the things that uh, would think would motivate, would inspire, I should have been putting that down there, you think would motivate and inspire people to, uh, to pursue Christ is the fact that he said that are the word, a discipline in the word, is he said, and you shall know the truth. And what did he say? And the truth shall make you free. But yet we find those that, that shun that, that reject that, and run behind experiences. But he never said an experience would make you free. He said the truth would make you free. Once you get into the word of God, believe you me, and you start being willing to obey it, you will have all the experiences you ever need. I'm serious. But a lot of people never... You know, they pursue the experiences, and, and, and I make reference to go back and study Israel when they were delivered from Egypt and their journey from Egypt to the Canaan land, the promised land, and, and, and watch their character, watch the way they live, and you will understand some things. That's not just back then. That's going on right now Amen. among the people of God. The moment God's not working a miracle, God's yeah. not manifesting himself in, you know, whatever way, the people get discouraged, depressed, lackadaisical, complacent, indifferent. Hello, some even get slow for about coming to church. Amen. But what they didn't understand was the day we got born again, we were supposed to start building something. And I'm going to sum it up in a personal relationship with God. We are supposed to start building that. And another example that I use all the time is called the Enoch walk. The just shall live by. We walk by. And without faith, impossible to please God. So we, we, we embrace that and realize that in order to do that, you must take God at his word and act accordingly. We, we touched on James and we mentioned uh, Faith without works is dead. Show me your faith without works and I'll show my faith by my works. Amen. So faith is a verb. It is something that you do. But that's not what I'm going to talk about tonight. We're going to get your own hook up with Sunday's message. And go to, I'm going to start in Galatians, the third chapter. And the 13th verse. And we'll try not to get too complicated. I've, I've, I've purposely lately been praying that God will help me even be more simple than I've been in the past. I thought I was simple, but some people thought I wasn't. So I've been praying that God will help me be more simple. 
Somebody said, you want to be simple? Yeah, because people seem like they can't understand me. I want people to know what God is saying. So Christ, the 13th verse said, Christ has redeemed us. Am I right? Amen. And most people, you know, have basic uh, training and grammar in English, and they understand has is a past tense word. They understand that you put ed on the end of a word, that means it is past tense, something that has already been done. So Christ has already delivered you and I from the curses are uh, the manifestation of the curse, but the curse manifests itself in different ways. That's why I said curse is. Now, I need to say that one more time because I because that should perk some people's interest when I said that uh, Christ has already delivered you from the manifestation of the curse. Already. Not going to be done. It's already been done. The price that the creator required blood of the person Jesus being the just being the innocent Jesus not having been contaminated in his blood or in his lifestyle became the lamb of God that took away the sin of the whole world so he took that wrath he took the penalty for sin on himself so that you and I and everyone that believe on him could be delivered from it. Not so we can continue in sin, but so that we can be free from the consequences of the sin that we were born into when we came into this world. Christ has redeemed us. So it's not going to be done. It's already done. That's where faith comes in. You got accepted at being so in your own life. Amen. I, I, I brought this up one time, and I don't know if I could say it again like I said it then, but I'm going to try. I was talking to someone, and I said, how do you know you saved? And you know, they went through the usual. I said, but you're not in the gate yet. So how do you know you say? <laughs> I'm going to give you a good, a good thing thermometer to go by. You're doing what God told you to do. You got what I'm saying? If you're doing what God told you to do, you say. But if you're not doing what God told you to do, you better get right with God. And don't die like that. That's all I can say. Don't die like that. So Christ has already accomplished this thing to deliver us from what and we've read it many times in the past, and I'll just hear it. I won't even go back there and read it. What came upon mankind was the curse upon the labor of his hands and physical uh, uh, infirmity and death. God cursed the work of the hands. Hello? Cursed his physical condition. Hello? And the penalty of his sin would eventually be that he would cease to function on this earth and stand before God. Now, some people say uh, that ain't happening to the judgment day. But according to uh, Ecclesiastes 12th chapter, it said that when man died, his spirit go back to God that gave it. According to the 12th chapter, book of 12th chapter, Ecclesiastes 12th chapter of Hebrews, as a point of the man wants to die. And after that, what? The judgment. So that means the moment a person dies, they're judged. We know they're not unconscious because the scripture said the spirit that God gave man goes back to God who gave it. So we find a lot of people, you know, trying to embrace that they got another chance after they die. You no, know, no. Once you take your last breath, it's over, buddy. These old folks you see at the time, at that tree fall, so shall they lie. So when that person take their last breath, ain't no chance to come back and get it right. Ain't no such thing as paying the priest. I know they do that now. I'm not saying they don't do that, but there's no need to trying to pay the priest. You just made him rich. That's not gonna help that that loved one. That that's not gonna help that relative that done went on to their just reward and they died in sin. 
Amen. If, now the accepted time. I'm going to say what the accepted time is while you're alive on this earth. That's the accepted time. So that's when you should bow your knee. Amen. Amen. Now then it goes on not only to say that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse, but the written curse that one hang upon a tree, that 13th verse of the third chapter of Galatians. But that next verse says something, something unique and beneficial to you and I. Amen. That the blessings of Abraham would come upon the Gentiles, that's us. Yeah. That's anybody that's not a blood, uh, 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 he, a blood he, a Israelite by blood. Amen. Amen. The Gentile. The blessings of Abraham. Whatever God promised Abraham would come upon the Gentiles, the non Jewish people. Hello. Through Christ. And we would receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. Amen. Now, I'm not going to be concerned about so much about the babies right now because we got a lot of mature people listening to me. A lot of mature people should be in the church right now. So I want to hit a little highlight on something right there. Jesus said in the seventh chapter of Matthew, he makes a revelation or a reveal something that always bothered me when I read it in the 11th chapter of the book of Luke. I think around that 13, 14 verse somewhere in there, he said, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give good things unto them that ask him? Then when you go over to Luke 11 and 13, I think it is, he didn't say good things. He so said, how much more shall you give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? And we showed you earlier, if you go to the first chapter of Genesis, you don't have to go there now. The Bible said that God said that there'd be light, and it was, and then the Spirit of God hovered on the face of the waters. What in the world was happening? He is a creative agent. He takes the Word of God and makes what God says so. Thank you. Y'all follow me? So when, when Paul said, that the blessing of Abraham will come upon you through the Lord Jesus and you receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Those were not two separate subjects. In order for you to get the blessing of Abraham, something must come upon you. Amen. The blessing is like an anointing. Amen. It is a manifestation of the Spirit. Y'all follow me? And the only way you can walk in that manifestation of the Spirit is through faith. But we want to separate it. I'm both separating and understand that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is the same. The anointing is actually the Holy Spirit equipping you, enabling you, empowering you, whatever word you want to use that'll help you do what you need to do. You follow me now? So when this happened, Jesus gave us access. I'm going to say it divine to, the, to divine enable me. We as Gentiles didn't have access through the priests and the prophets. They had to get circumcised. They had to become part of the Israelite tribe. So we under the New Testament have received the circumcision of the spirit. Hello? Hello? And have, an inher and have inherited the covenant of promises of Israel. Are you seeing this thing? Are you hearing me? Look over the second chapter of Ephesians. I read it so many times I thought to quote it, but I'm going to go ahead and read it to you again. Second chapter of the book of Ephesians. And someone may ask me, Father, why are you, why are you talking about that tonight? Why are you, why are you hitting on that? Because I want you to see something about this covenant that we have with God. Because if, if you don't understand what has happened, you'll keep living under the Old Testament privileges. And to me, like I said Sunday, y'all know I told y'all Sunday that some of us ain't living in that. Amen. Uh, Amen. Some of us not even living in that. I'm going to start a lumber, but uh, So I don't want to belittle that. 
You follow me? Amen. Because it, it should be you. It should be a goal that you you attain that. Amen. Because when I start really talking about the privilege and the promise that we got based on the new covenant, folk get lost. They can't embrace that. It's almost like I'm I'm blaspheming. I'm, I'm speaking against God. I'm talking antichrist stuff. No. What what I'm sharing that belongs to us under the new covenant far excels that of the old covenant. See, under the old covenant, we were like servants. Yes. But under the new covenant, we the Lord's. Amen. In him, the Amen. Lord. Y'all got it? The verse said, wherefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles, he will hear it again, in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision, in the flesh made by hands. That at that time, before we got born again, you were without Christ. Being aliens are strangers are isolated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers are isolated from the covenant of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But the next verse, just like Galatians 3.13, we see the next verse, uh, Ephesians 2.13. But now in Christ Jesus, we who are sometime afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Jesus shed his blood to give us access. His blood purchased us access. Access to God. Adam's sin got us kicked out of God's presence. Jesus' obedience got us returned through, to God's presence. Amen. And people don't understand that God was angry with us. Because of the sin. But through Christ who appeased his anger, we can now receive grace and fellowship Amen. with the Father. You got grace and fellowship with the Father. Now, a lot of people focus on grace and fellowship with the saints. That's good. Amen. But if you're out of fellowship with the Father, grace and fellowship with the saints ain't going to get you into heaven. It might help you a little bit on this earth, but it ain't going to help you in heaven. I'm serious. And eventually, your, your, your refusal to get into fellowship with the Father will cause that person, that saint, that brother, that sister in the Lord to end up cursed. Amen. Two can't walk together so that they be agreed. Amen. Hello? Whole, the world says association bring on assimilation. Birds of a fellow flock together. Right, Y'all follow what I'm saying? You follow what I'm saying? So now that Jesus had, the next verse said there was something between us and God. You start reading the rest of it, you'll see there was something between us and God. But Jesus removed that. It's no longer there. Look at the neighbor said, no longer there. Now, I'm going to try to find this verse, 29th chapter of the book of Jeremiah. I believe it's 29th chapter of Jeremiah. I'm going to try to find this verse. I, I, I think it's 11th verse. I could be wrong. And, uh, and I want you to see that even in the Old Testament told what Christ has accomplished for us. Yep, 11th verse. And what we don't Embrace a lot of times. And we actually, seriously, yeah, I, 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 seriously, there are people that sit and listen to the word of God, the true word of God, week in, week out, year in and year out, and still in their heart, they think God got something against me. Amen. Well, you must have been the one that did it then, because God didn't do it. Amen. So if you know how you offended him, repent and ask him to forgive you and get it straight. Amen. Go oh, watch this verse right here, the love verse. But he said, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. What do you say? Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. I want to read it from the contemporary English version. See, we talk about this new covenant, and if we want to walk in the hand give God a we walk. And the fullness of this new covenant, we got to get rid of whatever this is to make us think God is against us. No. Oh, he, he did it all for us. Amen. Amen. That can't, that can't be right. That can't be right. Let me get my glasses. I can't be seeing it right. But that is totally different. Let me read it. Okay, it's just totally different. Watch this. 
and say, I will bless you with a future. Hear what God said. Filled with hope, a future of success, not of suffering. Sound good, don't it? I will bless you with a future filled with hope, a future of success, not of suffering. Uh, now, if that's true, why are so many saints going through? Let me tell you, the only thing that saints should be suffering from, y'all with me? I mean, suffering from, you're going to go through tribulation, but you got victory over that. Now, don't get me quoting scriptures about that now. And you're going to be offended, but you got victory over that too. And don't get me quoting scripture about that because I'll, I'll be here all night. But the next two are the only two you can't get out of. There's nothing you can do about it. The next two, the real, the real one that you got to go through. See, in tribulation, he said, count it all joy. Why? Because he's with you. Amen. And I'm going to give you peace. That's what he said, ain't eh? so, and <laughs> So he said, my rod and my staff shall comfort you. Amen. Amen. So you're not going through it by yourself. You got what I'm saying? People will offend you. But what do you say? And I don't like saying this. Because you know how y'all are. With your vindictive self. You need to repent. Yeah. You're a grudgeful thing. Yeah. Take it to the altar. Because he said, woe be unto them by whom it comes. So I don't want nothing to happen to people because they be doing me wrong. Amen. Amen. Because, they, see, I know they're going to know what they're doing. Amen. They definitely can't recognize what they're dealing with. Amen. So I have to ask God to forgive them and spare them because they don't realize what they're doing. Amen. But you know how some people are. Get them, Lord. You don't need to look at me funny. You know your own heart. Better, better not do. No, I, I refuse. I'm not going out like that. That's the way they are. Them people that don't know Christ. Amen. Because they don't know what I know. If they knew what I know, they wouldn't be like that. They'll get saved and they'll know what's waiting on. Amen. 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 Ain't nothing in this life compared to what's waiting on us. Against you. The Bible Act turns 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 5th chapter, 21st verse. Now, I don't want to stay on this too long, but I said I'll go very simple, very basic. So if I don't get into the deeper meat of this, you're already getting some good stuff. So don't act like you're going home hungry. Pastor didn't feed us tonight. I'm about to stuff you. So you get you get this here, you're gonna be off, off the chain. He's so big you can't get through the door. 20 verse said, for he had made him to what? To be seen. Who he made to be seen? Back to that same 13th verse of the third chapter of Galatians. It said he became sin, being made a curse, for the written curse is everyone to hang upon a tree. Now, what they say here? He made him who, who knew no sin. Right? To become sin, that we might be what? Made the righteousness of God in everything done with our faith and sin. So the moment you start losing your joy and rejoicing of the hope, you're now grudgingly serving God. So that's not that's not faith. Hello? You're doing it now because you're scared of going to the other place. That fiery place. Y'all got what I'm saying? Now I want you to back up a few few verses here. The ministry of reconciliation is called this, 19 verse. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. See what he's talking about now? Not in putting there the world trespasses unto them, but has committed unto us as a born again believers, the one that accepted the God, bowed and needs the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the word of reconciliation. So we're trying to let people know God's not angry with you anymore. Amen. God's not, his wrath is not on you anymore. Amen. But if you keep on sinning like you're sinning, it will come on you. Amen. Come to Jesus while you got changed. Amen. Hello? Because he is bearing your, he keeping the wrath off you right now. Mercy. Amen. Yeah, he, mercy is on you because of Jesus. Uh, the writer said he is the perpetuation for our sins. Not for ours only, but for the sins of the Old world. The only people who are going to be lost is those that refuse to come to Jesus. 
Y'all got this thing now? You see it? You see it? You see it? So go to 8th chapter, the book of Hebrews. Now we're going to get into the covenant. Again, we refer to it Sunday. Ooh, six verse. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry, talking about Jesus. By how much also he is the mediator of a better, a what? A what? A better cousin. What does that mean? It's better than what Moses had. It's better than what Joshua had. It's better than what Daniel had. It's better than what Elijah and Elisha had. Y'all getting this thing now? Now you got to remember what I just named. I just named some powerful more. That is some powerful work. But the covenant they had with God is not to be compared with the one that you and I had. So if they was able to do what they did under that covenant, we can never say how much more you can do under this new covenant. Because it said it's found, which was established upon what? Better promises. Y'all see that? It's established upon what? Better promises. Now let's turn to 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. Now, it's to you, up to you to go home and meditate on this prayer word so that the Spirit can get it deep down into your, your Noah and you can stop walking in fear and doubt and walk in the revelation of this and it's going to transform you, change you completely. Amen? Amen? Yes, it will. I know it will. Of ourselves, Paul said, to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of who? God. He's our source. He's our source. That's why I want you to get that. He's our source. Who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. So I want to tweak that just a little bit. I have the promise that He bore my sins in His own body from the tree. That I being dead to sin to live under righteousness by whose stripes I was healed. That's the letter of the promise. Amen. You got what I'm saying? Amen. But how do I get from the letter of the promise into the spirit of the promise when I experience it? Y'all see where I'm going now, right? But y'all still with me? Didn't get lost? Okay, I'm glad you're still tagging along the hand. So in order to walk into the spirit of the promise, the reality of the promise, the manifestation of the promise, I've got to see myself. Possessing that promise. Amen. Now, stay with me now, because see, a lot of folks won't throw away the left. That's like throwing away your title deed to your car. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? If you throw away the letter, you throw away your title of deed to the car. All people fussing about the law. The law is the schoolmaster that brings you to, to what? Faith in Christ. So if you throw away the schoolmaster, how are you going to get the faith in Christ? Thank you. You won't. And that's what's happening to a lot of people. They're throwing away the law, not realizing that the law is necessary. It can't. Woo! It can't produce righteousness in you, but it's taking you to the person that right. can. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. And it will actually drive you to him. Because yes. it'll make you say, woe is me. Yes. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. So what is happening is a lot of people are, are throwing away the, the baby with the bath water. So now they never get the experience and they have to bring something else in to 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 replace it. Like I think about when they when somebody showed too much in the temple and then when never, the king of Babylon came, he took all the gold and the silver and all they were left with was brass, sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. That's what then happened to a lot of people. They got the sound. They're going through the motions, but there's no power. Why? Because they threw away the promise, which is the letter of the law. Amen. 
It is a schoolmaster. Yeah. Now, if another way of saying this, it is a conditioner right. to prepare you to receive the promise Amen. or the manifestation of the promise. So if you never get conditioned, it's just like when you when if you're training for any kind of sports team, the training is called conditioning. Amen. And if you pass the conditioning, what happens? You become a team member. Nice. But if you don't pass the conditioning, what happens? Yeah. They send you back home. I don't even know if they give you get cut. I don't even know if they give you a bus ticket back home or not. Y'all follow what I'm saying? But no one, basically no one in the past was really emphasizing it to the body of Christ or to the church people. And so they have been stumbling and fumbling in the dark, but almost ever since Christ went back to heaven. And we never got to the better covenant. We watched others that were manifesting the, the gifts of the spirit and got excited over it. But the whole body of Christ is supposed to be walking in that realm. Mm. Speak, Holy Ghost, speak. But because we were kept out of it. Forgive me if it offends anybody and it makes you look something. Let me tell y'all something. Ain't no narcissist got any business being in God's house, His poor, especially in a leadership position. Y'all know what that means, right? It's all about them. It's all about them. Pastor, ain't it all about you? No. I'm here to serve you. And I think I'm doing my part good. Amen. May not in somebody's eyes, but I was told to feed the flock. Amen. With knowledge and understanding. I was told to pray for them. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 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 I do my job real good. Amen. But back, back to that point again. So they're constantly measuring what they share with the congregation on how the congregation responds to them. You got what I'm saying? If you're already where I want to take you, I need to go where you're not and take you there. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So if I can only preach you what you can agree with and go along with and shout with and praise God with and, and, and laud me with all kind of glory, then that means I'm trying to get you to promote me. Yes. I'm not feeding you, strengthening you, building you up so you can be all that God wants you to be. Now, I'm going to share this with you and I want to get this. I remember when mom and dad used to fix wholesome meals for me. And I mean, many times I didn't want to eat it. But they trained me. They conditioned me to know if you don't eat it, you go, you go to bed hungry. Amen. Or you go to school hungry. Y'all know what I'm saying? So what started me to eating it? So <laughs> thank you, thank you, son. I didn't want to go home. I want my belly hollering at me while I'm trying to sleep. I'm at school sitting in the, in the, the desk in my stomach growling and caring. They want to put me out of class. No, uh -uh, no, no, no. They didn't have, early, what do what they call it? When you went to school, they do it now. They got it now. But they didn't have that when I was coming up. Where they, where they, where they serve you breakfast or whatever when you get to school. They ain't have no early meal or whatever you call it when I was coming up. If you, you had to make it to lunch. There you go. You didn't have no money. You couldn't eat lunch. And if mama told you because you eat your breakfast, I ain't giving you no sandwich to take the lunch with you. You just go to school all day home. <laughs> so they conditioned me by not trying to pat me on my back, hello, somebody, placate me by telling me if you don't, then you're going to suffer behind. You will learn. <laughs> and I learned to eat before I went to school. I learned to eat what they put on the table in the evening time, but I didn't want to go to bed home. So what happened to me? They discipled me. Amen. They disciplined me into doing what was beneficial, not for them, but for me. Amen. And I began to appreciate it. So now I look back and I realize they wasn't wrong, I was wrong. Amen. But you got a lot of adults now that think their parents were wrong. No, you didn't. they think they're wrong because they don't understand conditioning. If you leave something to itself, it will, it, I'm going to just move it a rock yeah. to the core. Yeah. Amen. You have to work that thing. Amen. And so if your parents left you alone, no one you the way you are. I need to let that soak a little bit. 
He told the parent to train the child up in the way that they should go when they're older and not depart from it. And he said for the father to train them to raise them up in the ammunition of the law. Y'all got what I'm saying? I hope you're getting it. So what had happened was they took the baby and threw him out with the bath water. If you want to be able to receive the manifestation of this new covenant, you're going to have to discipline yourself to walk in line with what God says. I just, there's a whole lot of stuff I want to say, but I can't say. Y'all know what I'm saying? Some things dealing with individual people that are still alive. I can't really talk about that. They get wind of it and, you know, they get mad and want to backslide and go to hell because they're upset with Pastor because he used their story. Amen. So some stuff I can't mess with. But when you get it in your head that you know more than the Bible, you got a real problem. You got an eternal problem. Amen. Jesus said you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now I want you to watch this now. The scripture says in St. John 17 and 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Anyone here know what sanctify means? It literally means to set apart. Y'all got it? Amen. So Jesus is actually saying, Father, set them apart for your use through thy word. Your word is true. So how can we be set apart for God's use? By the word. That's how. So if you don't discipline yourself to live based on the principles of the scripture, you're not sanctified. Amen. You might be cranktified, pranktified, or stinkified, but you're not <laughs> sanctified. Amen. Well, what I'm saying. So some people can't get the reason why the manifestation is not happening. Because you didn't threw the baby out with the bath water. There's a reason for the level. There's a purpose for the level. Right. It is to bring you to the manifestation of Christ. Jesus said you search the scriptures. Huh? But in them, you think you have life. Now watch what he says, though. And they missed this part. They testify of me. So it, he is in there. Because it's testifying of him. It's revealing him. You got what I'm saying? So what it was, they didn't recognize. Did you get that point? See, they were looking at the letter and the letter was telling them about life. But they didn't recognize it because it was presenting to them a person. Now, let me explain this to you and I want y'all to get this. This is not for your benefit. It's for the glory of God. Now, I know I told you he did all this for you, but you were created in the beginning. Yeah, you were created in the beginning for his glory. So the whole purpose of this is to get you back to glorifying him. Amen. How we, see, the woman is the glory of the man. She's supposed to be the best. Bob, you're supposed to be the best, the best, the best of Sammy. Amen. Mm -hmm. if Sammy ugly and mean and honored and can't get along with folks. You're supposed to be able to get along with people. You're supposed to be kind and loving and forgiving and understanding. You're supposed to be the best of the best of sin. Not just like him. <laughs> but because God is perfect and God is good, he wants us to be just like him. So that we can represent him. So that's how we become his glory. Because we act like him. Walk like him. Talk like him. Do what he would do. Y'all getting in there? So that's what the whole purpose of this is, is to glorify him by becoming like him. Jesus said you can become as, as the master, but you'll never be greater than the master. That's what he's talking about. Amen. Y'all seeing this thing now? See, I know I'm dealing with a whole lot of stuff people don't get in these religious churches. And, and many of them been in church probably all their life. Some listen to me. And they can't comprehend sometimes what I'm saying because they are trying to relate with their experience. Your experience can't relate to this unless you are walking in what they say. So you're going to have to divest yourself of being controlled by your past experiences. Because it will blind you to what the letter is telling you about this person. And the only way, this is a road map to get to this person. And the only way you're going to get to this person is following this road map. 
Y'all got what I'm saying? And when you throw the roadmap away, you just got lost forever. And that's what's happening to a lot of people in our generation. They're throwing the roadmap away and going out here pulling in these false religious teachings. This mystical Eastern religious teachings and bring them into the house of God. There is meditation, but it's meditation in the word. You don't sit there and empty yourself. Because he done told you already, if you're empty, there's something that went out of you, don't want to come back. So you got to fill yourself with the word of God. Amen. You don't sit around and go, they that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, not on you. You got what I'm saying? See, we don't get involved with that stuff. The enemy knew what he was doing when he taught those cultures how, what to do. He was teaching them to empty themselves of their will so that he could possess them. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So you're not just getting rid of stuff, you receiving stuff. So what are we getting rid of? Sin. <laughs> what are we receiving? Righteousness, holiness. And, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thank you. Let's get back to the fact. Get back before we get too late. I know this is deep. It ain't deep, but it's deep for some folks. So he said, but as the ministration of death, written and engraved in stone, was glorious. And this part I want to really get you to see. If you can see this. People don't know where they're going. reveals but if the ministration of death written and engraven in stone was glorious what did Paul, Paul call it he said that was written in stone was glorious you think about this for a minute how many of y'all got a handwritten letter from God you can even say if you tell them you got one I want to see you God gave Moses a handwritten letter it was written by the hand of God. Y'all got what I'm saying? And you don't think that's glorious? Let me use another one. You don't think that's valuable? The creator of the universe wrote Moses a letter. So you can see what Paul is trying to tell us. It was glorious. And that glory was so great that when Moses came down off the mount, he had to cover his face because people couldn't look at him because he was, he was, it was so bright. Well, well if, if you say you got the spirit and I got the letter, where your brightness is? <laughs> I ain't even going there with that one because that's going to be messed up on that one. But the sad part about it is, and they, they think they, they loud, my, one of my daughters said, loud and wrong. Loud and wrong. <laughs> One thing I like about the, 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 the word, the written word, it show you you. It'll let you see where you, you're coming short at and what you need to work on. But if you throw it away, and then they go to holler, ain't no condemnation under them. You need to go ahead, go ahead, say it, say it, say it, that are in Christ. Who, who, who? Walk not after the flesh, but after what? The spirit. Y'all got it? So they don't go that far. They just say, ain't no condemnation in Christ. Yeah. But you need to read, you need to quote. Are you good when you say in Christ? Because he's in Christ is the word. And if you're in the word, you're right. You, there's no condemnation in there, but I'm gonna go you one better. He said if you're really in the spirit, you won't be condemned. Hello? A lot of folks saying they're in the spirit, but they, they check the character out. But they're really walking out in the flesh. Amen. See, I'll give, I'm going to give you just one little example. The fruit of the spirit is L-O-V-E. You want to know how love works? First, first Corinthians 13 chapter, 4 through the 8th verse. When you read that, and you say you're spiritual, and your character don't line up with that, 
You fooling yourself. That's, see, remember, it's, I looked into this perfect law of living and I saw that, what I just told you. So I knew what I, if I'm really operating in the spirit, I'm going to be like that. You got people still sitting up in the church right now. I think they really ain't God and don't realize they're in the place. Come. Because their attitude ain't right. If your attitude is not a love attitude, he that love or not, for God is and everyone that love us, and he that love us not, don't know what? God. I didn't say it is written in the holy writ of God. So he said, this, this, this engraving in stone was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory would be done away with. So th that's why I was emphasizing that the so-called letter they talk about had Moses' face glowing. And it, it had to be more than just had his face glowing because the book said 120 years old, the light in his eye had not them, neither the vitality of his body. So what does that mean? That, that glory was giving him life. Not killing him, but making him alive. So what they don't understand is if you look at the letter and don't practice it, it will condemn you. That's the death it's talking about. If you look at the letter of the law and don't practice it, it will condemn you. That's the death it's talking about. So they miss that part and don't tell people that part. And the reason they condemn you is because you know you ain't right. But when you repent and get it right in Christ, <laughs> they preach whatever they want to preach. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That's right, Bible. That's right. Why? Because you're living right. So he said, watch it, watch it, watch it. How shall not the administration of the Spirit be rather glorious? But if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in manifestation. Y'all didn't get that far. If the... <laughs> If the administration of that which we say called death created the similitude of life, how much more shall the spirit or the covenant is after the spirit produce life? Because the Bible says that the body without the spirit is dead, so it's faith without work. Now, I, I want you to catch that because it didn't reverse it. I'm going to reverse it for you. The spirit makes the body alive. Amen. When your spirit leaves your body, your body is dead. Amen. So it is your spirit that's making your body alive. So what does that mean? Your body moves because of the spirit. Isn't that manifestation? Isn't that manifestation? So your body is moving only because of one reason. The spirit's in there. So if you're saying you got the spirit and there's no manifestation of the promises, what are they telling you? They are either sincerely mistaken or they just outright lying. I don't say anything from the pulpit to try to get no brownie points. I get my revelation and understanding from the Father by the Holy Spirit. And I say what he tells me based on what he teaches me. And we got to come to the realization that God don't lie. Amen. <laughs> he said what he meant, meant what he said. Amen. And if he told you to go do something, thank you. <laughs> So we get up and keep making all these promises of my God, this God, that nothing happened. The law is on. It's not shortened. Then it cannot deliver. Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your sins and iniquities separate between you and your God that he will not hear you. Isaiah, what, 59 and 1. So when we come to realization that the reason why God not answering is because we got sin in the camp. You got what I'm saying? Get the sin out, what happened? Even he said, what, the ninth chapter of John 27, what is it, ninth chapter of John, 31st verse? 9 and 31, yeah, 31st verse, ninth chapter of the book of St. John. We know God here, here, not. We know that God here, not, sinners. 
But if a man be a worshiper, that hear of the word only that it bless in his deeds, but the one that hear it and does it that it bless in his deeds. So what is the spirit then? The spirit is the word in operation. The latter was just talking about this on this page right here. But what you're talking about, when you take that word and you put feet and hand to it, that becomes spirit. And when it becomes spirit, it manifests. Y'all didn't get that, did y'all got that, did So if I walk around saying, if, if I walk around, no matter how I feel and what it looked like, thanking God for my healing, what am I embracing? Spirit. And who makes the body alive? The spirit. Who called the dry land to come forth out of the water? The spirit. Who raised Jesus from the dead? The spirit. What removed the burden and straw to yoke? The spirit. What brings living and freedom? The spirit. What did Jesus say the children would cast the devil out by? By the spirit. Are y'all seeing this thing? So when you get that word in your heart and start acting on it, that is spirit in life. That is the manifestation. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It works every single time. Then read on a little bit more. Then we're going to go to Old Testament and Haggai. He said, for if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. But even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelled. Do y'all see this thing? This glory of the new covenant far excels that of the old covenant. But when you look at what Moses did, well, let's say Ab when you look at Abraham, he prayed for a king and his people, and God healed a whole nation. When your prayers didn't heal a whole nation. I ain't met a preacher yet who prayers, I ain't seen one on TV yet who prayers healed the whole nation. But Abraham, under the old covenant, his prayers healed the whole nation. Huh? Moses is so prophetic and so anointed with the gift of the manifestation of faith. Moses called down 10 judgments on the nation and by wiped them out Amen. under the old Amen. under the letter. <laughs> Y'all see what I'm saying? Don't get in that lie, Jerry, and that lie, Shah. Don't get in the Samuel. You know what I'm saying? Don't get in them boys like Joshua who made the sun stand still and the moon stand still. Then you begin to realize that we missing something. If them boys did that under the old covenant, and this 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 glory of this covenant exceeds and excels that of the old, a whole lot of us need to get on our face and repent. <laughs> Amen. So when people are saying to me, "What kind of man are you?" I was demonstrating, Son of God, that I got access. Amen. He want to call me angel, this and. I'll demonstrate that I got access. Look at they say access. What kind of access? Access to God's ear. <laughs> he hears me. Amen. People finding money in their pockets. Access. Amen. People call me, speak. The storm coming. They say it's going. I said, pray. Get the people agree with you. I'm gonna pray, and it's going the other way. Amen. What happened, Pastor? It went the other way. It dissipated. By the time the king landed, it wasn't no rain. Who did that? God. How did you get him? How you get him to do it, Pastor? I took letter and put spirit to it. <laughs> what do you mean you put spirit to it? I acted it out. Amen. Second, second chapter, Haggai in the ninth verse. I was talking that why I couldn't remember what it was. I mean the book. I, was, I knew what the chapter of verse. I was trying to find the book. The ninth verse said, "The glory of this latter house." See, the Old Testament house was a temple made by hands. The New Testament house is the body of Christ. Y'all seeing this? When Solomon built the old temple house out of hand, such a thing had not been seen, seen, uh, even heard of. And he 
and the, the, the riches and the treasures that it was built out of was so valuable, I didn't even find out the cost of it yet. But it was tons and tons of gold and silver and brass. Tons. Somebody say tons. See, we talk about gold in ounces not and pounds, not tons. <laughs> that I say of the Lord of hosts. Y'all see that? Say y'all see that? The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, say of the Lord of hosts. So you think that the body of Christ is <laughs> not gonna be greater than Israel? Huh? In her full glory under the Old Testament covenant? A thousand times no. We are the manifestation of the Son of God in earth. We are the manifestation of the Son of God in earth. All we got to do is walk it out. Find out what he said and just do it. Amen. Stop doubting what God has done in you. He placed the same spirit in you that was in Christ. Now follow what I'm saying. The same one that did all that Jesus did is in you. That's the You ain't doing what Jesus did. You got to talk like you talk, act like you act, and it'll work. Amen. That's why I be talking about you got to imitate him. Amen. He told, go back to the old covenant. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth. Huh? Huh? But you shall meditate in it day and night. Huh? Then you may observe to do. do whatsoever you find written therein and then shall you make your way prosperous. And then shall you have good success. When? When you stay in that word day and night, say what it say and do what it say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive that engrafted word with meekness. It's working to save your soul. Let us pray. Father, we're so grateful and thankful for this opportunity to share what you put in my spirit with the saints. I, I thank you that they're receiving their word and their word is working in effectually and they're producing fruit to the kingdom of God, to the glory of God. You be all the honor, you be all the praise in Yeshua's name. And everyone said amen. amen and amen again. Amen. Turn around, look at your neighbor, say, The glory, the glory that you have, have excels excel the, the glory that Moses had. I'm out there. Can you believe it? <laughs> That's it. Can, if you can believe it, for you is so right now. If you can believe it for you, it's so right now. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless. Thank God. For all those listening by way of social media, thank God for those over here. We appreciate y'all tonight. I know you could have been elsewhere, but you showed the better part. Amen. Encourage your brothers and sisters that were to choose the better part. Amen. Everything that the scripture is saying is being fulfilled right in front of our eyes. Amen. We're living in the very last moments of the last days. But the saints of God, if we take this word serious and rise up, we can turn it around. And Jesus will come, see what we've done, leave a blessing and return. Then it'll be another thousand years before he come back. Or six thousand or seven thousand. Amen. Pastor, you believe that's possible? I do. Because it's in the scripture. If I didn't see it in the scripture, I wouldn't have said it. It's very possible that we can do that. That we can rise up and take God's word, do what he says to Turn this thing around. And he come and say, all right, that's the way it's supposed to be done. And bless us and go back. Amen. Amen. Very possible. But it, 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 just pray for me. I'm going to say this. If you get offended, just be offended. When we get serious about our relationship with Christ, that's when it'll happen. That's when the saints will begin to blossom and shine forth in this earth Amen. and it would turn our society around. Amen. 
He called us the light and the salt, but there's been very little of that. We've been a few sparkles. But to be the light that he talked about, we're going to have to stop playing with our relationship and get real with him. Because he don't lie. He don't put on shows. The Jesus of the Bible, not the one some of us believe in. The stuff we be trying to push over on him, that Jesus of this Bible would not have tolerated. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm serious. But yeah, we sit right up in church. We hear this, read it. Some of us read our Bible all the time and don't see it. Jesus didn't tolerate this mess that's going on in churches now. Jesus would have that whip and turn them all out. He didn't play that mess. No. <laughs> But we accepted it because it has been the norm. This is what's been going on for so long. And people never saw folk that emphasize book, chapter, and verse. You got to live by it. They'll all told you, just come to church and have a good time. Just praise the Lord. Well, where do you get the praise from? It's in the book. Where do you get to come to church from? It's in the book. Why are you leaving the rest out? Right. Now, you got what I'm saying? Why did they leave the rest out? And that's all they wanted to hold on to. Because they could live with that and still have their... I'm going to call it, still eat their cake and ice cream. But that don't mean it was accepted. And what we want to be accepted is by, thank you. Forget what men and women got to say. What does he say? And the Jesus of the Bible is not the Jesus a lot of these folks put for Britain in the churches. He would never tolerate this. Never. He don't play with the devil. He never did. He cast him out wherever he went. Amen. The devil actually would fall down and start screaming. And oh, you come to torment us for the time? <laughs> he didn't even have to say anything because they knew he meant business. Who he got there? Amen. Yes, Lord. But I just pray that you take serious your relationship with God. Because I'm telling you, if you lose on, you won't, you, you, <laughs> you can forget it. And this is the age when they're going they're trying their best to intimidate believers. They're trying to pass laws all across the world to make it illegal to talk about Jesus. Amen. So you think the, if the way you are now, you're going to survive that? That ain't going to happen. Because the moment they tell you you got to get out your house and you can't stay there no more because you're a Christian. See, in Iraq, during, that, during, during the time when ISIS was acting stupid, and one of those one of those houses, they were mocking them at first that they were of the Nazarene. Yep. Then they went back and told them they had to convert to Islam. Or uh, die. So many of them had they they didn't convert, they left. But the sad part is a lot of them did convert. One one lady, and I'm gonna tell this and go, one lady, her family went and got the pastor. And the pastor came to her and said, well, you can pretend like you converted. And she put the book on his book. Steve was using that word. She put the book on him. She quote so much scripted him about what Jesus said. He looked at her and apologized. Said, I'm sorry and left. <laughs> After all he's done for me, I'm going to be ashamed of him and of his words. <laughs> But the pastor, what kind of pastor would tell a saint to pretend, to pretend like you converted to Islam so you're going to be killed? God don't want you to be killed. Sweet Jesus. God bless you. We thank God all those listening by social media. I pray that you'll take your relationship with God serious and realize that we're living in the end time. Christianity is being, it's just like Judaism and Israelites are being hated by the whole world. And they're coming for us. But if we can get to that place where we're walking this thing out like we're supposed to, they may come, but they'll go back and fall to the ground. <laughs> God bless you. Heaven smile on you. We'll see you Sunday, Lord. Will nothing happen. Sister Bob.